Most of us have burned ourselves at one time or another, perhaps on a stove or on a candle, so we know how painful it can be, and can only imagine how it would feel to be completely engulfed in flames. Being scalded with boiling water is no joke either, so just imagine being submerged into a whole pot of it. Or, you know, whatever, don't, I'm not your torturer. These are just another two of the worst forms of execution in our Medieval Punishment series. Be warned, this video is graphic. Welcome to Medieval Madness. Boiling. Boiling to death was often used as a method of execution in the Middle Ages across many countries. It would take quite a while to boil to death, as soon as a person is dropped into the bubbling water, first their skin, then their flesh, and finally their fat would start to broil. They would probably go into shock, but not die until their internal organs began to cook. It's an extremely brutal punishment. In the Middle Ages, according to legend, William II de Sols, Lord of Hermitage Castle, became prey to this special kind of torment too. De Sols was a nobleman who had a penchant for dabbling in the dark arts. Whether this is to be believed or not, William seems to have been a rather unpleasant man who was a known traitor and conspired against the Scottish King Robert the Bruce. It is said that he had some of his servants surgically attached to yoke-type devices so that they could move heavy objects like a pack animal. All of his barbaric acts were performed with the help of his demonic familiar, and he became so evil and cruel that his people revolted against him to end his reign of tyranny. Apparently his supernatural powers could not be contained, so the locals forged a special chain to hold him and dragged him to the top of Ninestane Rig in Scotland, near the English border. Because he could not be killed by conventional means, he was boiled in a large cauldron, not of water, but of molten lead, in around 1321. The second version of de Sol's death is rather more boring, but it is the one that most historians believe actually happened. In 1320, he conspired with the English against Robert the Bruce. The plot failed, and de Sol's was rounded up with his fellow collaborators and taken to Dumbarton Castle, where he was imprisoned and later died. In another tale of human boiling, a cook from the household of the Bishop of Rochester was found guilty of putting poison into the soup meant for his master and his guests, causing the deaths of two of them. He was publicly cooked to death at Smithfield, London in 1531. A maid servant was also boiled alive for poisoning her mistress that same year. The punishment was used across the Holy Roman Empire for coin forgers, fraudsters and murderers, as well as in Britain. Although there the preferred liquid was oil rather than water. In Nuremberg, a man was boiled alive in oil for raping and murdering his own mother. A case of boiling in oil was recorded as late as 1687 at Bremen, Germany, for a man who had aided and abetted some coin forgers. Burning In antiquity, the ancient druids burned people and animals as a form of sacrifice. A large figure would be made from wooden straw in the effigy of a giant human. The body, arms and legs of the wicker man would be filled with criminals before the figure was set alight. By the Middle Ages, there were three different types of execution by burning. The first was to attach the prisoner to the stake with chains or iron hoops and pile up bundles of wood around the base of their feet. This had the highest visual impact and was the favourite method of the Spanish Inquisition and the British. It produced a long, lingering and agonising death that the authorities believed was fitting for a heretic because it would take quite a while for the flames to reach the level of the head. Those found guilty of treason or witchcraft would be strangled first in a show of mercy. For convicted witches in Scotland, the strangulation actually formed part of the sentence. Many women were burned alive for civil offences. The punishment was a substitution for hanging which was considered indecent for women as it exposed their mangled body in public. Although in many cases, they were first strangled into unconsciousness so that they would be deprived of sensation, as if that's any consolation. This was seen as an act of humanity, authorised by the English nation. The second method of execution by fire was to completely surround the prisoner with bundles of wood right up to the neck. This hid their suffering and created an inferno around them, leading to a much quicker death, as the victim breathed in the fumes and smoke and suffocated quite quickly. There have also been recorded cases of female victims being covered in tar and even having a tar-covered bonnet placed upon their head in the hope that the flammable substance would make the fire extremely fierce and hasten death. In Germany and Scandinavia, a third method was popular. It comprised of tying the prisoner to the top of a vertical ladder which was swung down and suspended over the fire. This was a particularly horrific way to go as the victim would slow cook like an animal roasting on a spit before they would eventually catch fire. 
In most cases, the best thing a victim of burning at the stake could hope for would be a lot of smoke. That way, they would likely suffocate before they would be cooked to death. If they were fortunate enough to inhale a lot of hot fumes, it would cause damage and swelling to the airways, and a lack of oxygen would lead to unconsciousness. Of course, the primary flames would be agonizingly painful on the skin of the lowest part of the body. The only consolation being that once the nerve endings are destroyed by the fire, then the pain in that area would cease. As the fleshy parts of the body burn, skin is destroyed, and the muscle and fat shrinks along with the internal organs. This shrinkage of body tissues causes the victim's body to contract, and the body adopts flecked knees and elbows and clenched fists. The charred corpse will assume what is known as pugilistic stance, because it resembles a boxer-like posture. The blackened body doesn't just disintegrate into ashes. Some of the bones take much longer to burn through than others. A fire has to be exceedingly hot to completely destroy a body, hence the temperature in a modern crematorium chamber reaching to between 800 and 1000 degrees Celsius. After the burning of Joan of Arc, the Cardinal of Winchester had Joan reburned a second time because he thought that her corpse still had resembled her too much. Then he had her burnt again a third time because there were still some organs that hadn't been destroyed. After this, he was finally satisfied that she had been thoroughly cleansed. Heretics The burning of heretics was made law by Pedro II, the King of Aragon and Count of Barcelona, at the end of the 12th century. Burning was particularly favoured by the Spanish Inquisition, as it meant that none of the victim's blood was spilled. This was forbidden under Catholic law, as it would guarantee that the prisoner would have no body in the next life. Then in 1224, Frederick II made burning a legal form of execution across the Holy Roman Empire for heresy. By 1238, it had become the main form of punishment. It took until 1270 for the King of France, Louis IX, to make it mandatory. Those found guilty of heresy were not strangled before they were burned. This was deliberate so that they suffered as painful a death as possible. They were quite literally burned alive. The purifying flames were thought to cleanse the soul of a heretic or witch. The date of the first burning in Britain is not known, although one is recorded in 1222 in Oxford, England. A Christian deacon of the church converted to Judaism, at a time when anti-Semitism was at its height in Britain. After being circumcised and marrying a Jewish woman, he was burned alive for heresy. Perhaps the most famous heretic to be burned at the stake was the previously mentioned Joan of Arc, who is known as the Maid of Orleans and is considered a heroine of France for her role in the Hundred Years' War. Captured by the Burgundians, she was ransomed to the English and tried as a heretic because of her heavenly visions, and for the sin of cross-dressing. Joan was found guilty and tied to a pillar and burned at the marketplace at Rouen. She was just 19 years old. She was canonised in 1920 and declared a patron saint of France. Han Hus was a Czech philosopher and church reformer. He was born in the Kingdom of Bohemia in 1372. After being accused of 39 offences against the Catholic Church in 1415 and sentenced to be burned to the death, he refused to renounce his beliefs. He was stripped and had his hands tied with rope behind his back, and he was chained by the neck. Straw and wood were piled up high around him, and he was lit on fire. He remained stoic until the end and began to sing. His ashes were scattered in the River Rhine. One of his followers, Paul Craw, also suffered the same fate in St Andrews, Scotland in 1443. Only he had a brass bull forced into his mouth first so that he couldn't communicate with the crowd in the same way. Fra Dalcino, who was the leader of a religious sect considered sacrilegious by the Catholic Church, was executed in northern Italy in 1307. First he was castrated, and then he had his limbs torn from his body before they were burned by the executioner. In 1322, 15 years after his death, 30 of his followers were burned to the death in the marketplace at Padua. Dalcino was deemed by some to be one of the originators of the socialist movement, and the ideals that led up to the French Revolution. After the public burning of a woman named Margaret Sullivan in England in 1788 for forging coins, there was a piece in the Times newspaper which read, quote, There is something so inhumane in burning a woman, disgrace to the enlightened sense of this country. Capital offences such as murder and coining were considered to be high treason and were dealt with severely. We can only be thankful that a year later, the last woman was burned in Britain, and the law was repealed by George III in 1790 when the punishment was changed to that of hanging, the same as for men. Thank you for watching this episode of Medieval Madness. Do you hope you've enjoyed it, and please subscribe as we do release videos every week. Cheers!